also dummy variable. So talk about F test, it's a joint F test. In other words, in a multivariate regression, if you want to test a combination of those betas equals to zero at the same time, then this is a joint F test. And so uh, uh, introduce the wrong way, introduce the correct way, so that talk about the difference. The wrong way will be, for example, if you care about beta two, beta three, both of them equals to zero at the same time. The wrong way will be to two t-test. The first one test beta two, another one test beta three, right? So this is a wrong way. Don't do this in general if you want to test the two together. So what's the correct way? The correct way should be, you should test the two jointly at the same time. So this is our F test. In other words, we want to get uh, one single F value rather than two separate uh, T values, right? So how do we do a F test? So we figure out the first model we call the unrestricted model. Unrestricted model means a no restriction, which contains everything. And then figure out a restricted model. Very simple. To figure this out, just plug in your H0. If you want to test, if your H0 is beta two, beta three, they are zeros. Then the restrict model, very simple, just plug in zero and a zero in our beta two, beta three, so that we got our restricted model. In other words, the re restricted model has a restriction, which is uh, right here, right? The restriction is our H0, right? <laughs> That's a terminology. So that compare these two different models, unrestricted model, restricted model. So under the null, under the null, if our H0 is really true, then both models supposed to be correct. So that both of them should be, should be give us the same, basically the same results, right? So that we compare the RSS from the first model and RSS from the second model. We check how their difference has, uh, if uh, under the null, the difference between the two should be very close to zero, right? So that's why, you know, intuitively, if our F value is close to zero, it's a signal, basically, H0 is true, right? If our F value different from zero, far away from zero, then it's a signal, you know, our H now probably not true. They two, they two model, you know, they're way different so that they produce very different RSS, right? That's the intuition. So how close is close? How different is different? So, so it's kind of hard to tell because this F value follows the F distribution. And F distribution has two degree freedoms. L and N minus K, so that it's kind of hard to, to check out the F table to remember the cutting off value because uh, there are too many cases, right? So in practice, we usually directly jump to the second way by using p-value, compare p-value smaller than 0 0.05 or not. If a lesser than 0 0.05, then we reject the null, just like before, just like our t-test, right? The second way. So, so usually, uh, we don't, for F test, we don't use method one or method three anymore. Recall method number one, we use a T ratio compared with as a 1.96, right? The cutting off value for F test is kind of hard to, to, to find. So that we don't use method one. Method three, we calculate the so-called CI, confidence interval, right? Right here, for example, we have beta two, beta three. So right here, the confidence interval actually is a, uh, has two dimensions, right? It's more like a circle. So again, it's too complicated, right? So that's why that's why when, when we talk about the multivariate case, actually, we always use the second way. The p-value will be always the easiest way, right? So how do we do this? We, in practice, we do an F test by using ANOVA command. So, you know, ANOVA. So we run a model, for example, we call this model one. We run another model called this model two. Then we use ANOVA command parenthesis, compare model one, model two, right? To see if they two give us the, you know, F value, P value, so on so forth. For example, uh, for example, in my example right here, we compare by using ANOVA command, we compare these two different models. So that ANOVA command give us F value, P value, so on so forth. In this example, F value is a 7.5. So again, we don't know this is large or small, right? We don't have a clear cutting off value. So we directly jump to the p-value 0 0.0008, which is of course less than 0 0.05, so that we reject the null. What's our h now? H now is usually, they two are the same. In other words, the difference, they two, 
they too have zero coefficients, right? In other words, our h now is a beta two, beta three. Both of them are uh, are zeros at the same same time, right? So opposite h one, h one, as I told you last time, do not try to figure out exactly the combination. Always use the sentence at least one of them is not a zero, right? <laughs> Simply write down the sentence so that. Um, so that at the very beginning, usually, you know, always make sure you put down the H now H1 and uh, report F value, P value, compare F P value was as 0 0.05, and then give you uh, give me your conclusion. Your conclusion will be either reject now or fail to reject now, right? So no more, no less. So you don't have to further discuss it you know, so on so forth. So that's basically the format to do a to do a test in general. Right here, a little detail is uh, the order I put right here is a model two, model one. In other words, model one will be the unrestricted model contains everything. So order, uh, first of all, computer codes uh, doesn't matter if you reverse order. In that case, if you reverse order, F value will be negative 7.5. Uh, so that uh, P, P value will be the same, right? But again, you know, to make it uh, better, then the order will be model two, model one, or usually, the unrestricted model, we put uh, the second one, right? That's a little detail. Um, mm. Right, right. If you reverse the order, P value will be the same. Um, that's our F test. We have uh, two special cases of the F test. Uh, very quickly reveal this. Special case number one, if you only test beta two, for example, equals to zero then our F test sim simply reduces to the T test. They two will give, give us exactly the same result. So, you know, the, the same P value. <laughs> so either way you're like, of course, T test will be much easier than an F test, right? Because T test, you can automatically based on the computer outputs directly use at that line and check out the P value, right? So, so that you don't have to run model one, model two, so that you know what to compare them. So, so a T sim sim simple T test will be much easier, right? This is the first case. Second special case will be, if you want to test all betas in your regression, equals to zero at the same time. This is called overall F test. Overall means all the betas, right? All the beta is equal to zero. If all beta equals to zero, it means your regression model will be really, really bad, right? Nothing in your regression actually affects your Y. <laughs> in that case, in that case, uh, it will be really bad regression, right? So that we would expect if that's really true, then our R square will be really, really small, right? So in this case, uh, we showed that there's a, a relationship between F and regression R squared. In other words, uh, the formula R squared divided by one minus R squared times M, a minus K divided by K minus one. So the formula right here actually equivalent to our overall F value. We, I showed you how to verify this and in the homework, you, you need to verify this by yourself, right? So, so that basically the corresponding relationship is a, a large R squared corresponding to a large overall F value. Or you can say a very small R squared, for example, if your R squared are very close to zero, then similarly, your overall F, F value will be also small, very close to zero, right? Both of them indicate so this is a really bad regression, nothing in your regression, no X, right? No X really affects your Y. This is a really bad regression, right? That's basically intuition. So that's a special case number two. For so overall F value, the overall F value, you don't have to you know, use ANOVA. Computer always reports the overall F value right here. Uh, whenever you run a regression, overall F value always reported at the bottom right here. This F value corresponding to so beta one, beta two, beta three, in my regression, I have three betas, right? The three equals to zero at the same time. That's why the degree freedom right here for the overall F is three, right? They're testing three betas because zero is the same time, right? So P value of this overall F, you know, of this overall F is uh, very small, smaller, much, much smaller than 0 0.05. So that we reject now. So that uh, H now is beta one, beta two, beta three, all three equals to zero. We reject now, it means, again, at least one of them is non-zero, right? <laughs> uh, that's a quick review of uh, F-test, so that I, uh, I'll continue to give you uh, another example of F-test today. But uh, last time, we also learned dummy variable. 
dummy variable takes value zero or one, right hand side right here. So that first of all, how to interpret the coefficient of dumb, dummy variable? Very simple. I showed you the little trick last time, right? Simply plug in the value x to be zero, plug in the x to be one, so that we have two equations, right? So the second equation minus first equation, so that we get the, the, you know, everything but beta left, right? Everything else canceled out. So that second equation minus first equation, the only difference is a beta right here. So beta is a difference between the second one minus first one. For example, if y is wage, if x is, uh, say, male dummy, right? So beta will be the difference between between male and a female, uh, right? Wage for male minus wage for female, right? The difference will be beta. That's basically the way we, we figure this out. And uh, uh, this is a y over x. But we further uh, talk about the case log y over a dummy variable x, right? So this is a, a little bit tricky because when you run a regression model log y over x, then x is a zero one dummy variable. Right here, the, the number beta is not percentage change in y anymore. Recall before it's, suppose your x is a continuous variable such as education. Then beta, the coefficient right here, log y over x, the coefficient of beta will be something like if your education increases by one year, then beta will be the percentage change in your wage, right? That's for the case continuous x. But now when x is a dummy variable, we cannot re, you know, interpret beta as MS before. We have to use a formula e to power beta minus one to calculate the number. This number is the elasticity, uh, not sorry, not elasticity, the percentage change, right, in terms of, uh, in your Y, right, between male and a female, for example. So, for example, suppose this is log wage over male dummy, log wage over male dummy, and uh, suppose the coefficient right here is a 0 0.8. So we cannot say male and a female, right, the difference of the wage uh, percentage change between two genders is a 0 0.8. Uh, 80%. No, this is wrong. We, you have to plug in the formula e to power beta, beta 0 0.8 and then minus 1, right? To calculate the number. Once you have the number, then interpret your beta accordingly, right? So so, so that's a difference between right-hand side or dummy variable, but left-hand side, either y or log y, so that uh, we interpret these uh, differently, right? Uh, a little detail. Before words, when, when we talk about, uh, before midterm, we introduce uh, four different models, right? Model one, model two, model three, model four, right? In other words, our Y could be log or not log. Our X could be, you know, X or log X, right? That's the case when they're continuous variable. That's why we have four combinations. Right here, first of all, when X is a dummy variable, actually it's simple, we have only two cases. We only discuss a case when left hand side y either you know log or not in log. In other words, y or dummy variable or log y or dummy variable. For x, it's simple in the sense we don't we don't discuss a case log dummy variable. Uh, why? Why we we don't we don't take log for the for the dummy variable zero one dummy variable. We never take log. Go ahead. Continuous, right? right, but to why <laughs> right. it's con not continuous so that we don't take log. Recall the definition for the dummy variable, which takes value zero or what, right? And why we don't take log? You don't know <laughs> exactly, <laughs> because x takes value zero or what, right? Zero. How can you take log log zero, right? <laughs> That's the simple reason, right? And one, of course, log one is a zero, but the log zero, you know, <laughs> doesn't exist, right? That's why for a dummy variable zero one, it's easier. You don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to take log, right? There's no such thing log a dummy variable, right? <laughs> By the way, for a dummy variable. You know, also, um, uh, we don't take uh, those uh, polynomials neither. In other words, we never calculate a dummy variable square. 
we never calculate dummy variable cubic sums first. In other words, for example, male dummy, for dummy variable such as male dummy, we never we never do those transformations such as a male dummy square, male dummy variable cubic. Why? Go ahead. <laughs> I think it's because we end up with the same. So if we have zero cubes, it still doesn't make sense. Yep. Zero and then the one cube. One, seven, exactly. Five. Very good. So again, based on the definition, zero, one, dummy variable, right? Zero square is a zero. One square is still one, right? <laughs> same thing for cubic. Zero cubic is still zero. Zero, one cubic is still one, right? In other words, male dummy square is exactly the same as a male dummy variable itself. Right, that's why no need to take uh, those kind of transformation. You know, we never take log, we never do square or cubic sums first. Right, so dummy variable actually in this sense is kind of easier. Right, <laughs> so that's a little technical detail. Um, so last time, uh, and also I'll give you some examples. Last time uh, we stopped at uh, right here. So today let's continue. Let's make the story even more complicated in the sense, let's talk about the case, dummy variable with also their interaction terms. And uh, in 